Kick, punch, rise, avenge her. Oh, did you forget or miss the last season of your anti-hero? Do you want a recap? Not that you deserve it, but sometimes it's nice to be charitable. Wow, I should be a priest or a monk. Oh, not a bad idea. Yes, I have those uh, when I'm not plotting murder. Focus, Chad Wicker. Recap time. My mother died. I went into an asylum. I came out with the desire to find my mother's killers. I met a guy who had my mother's killer. <laughs> He's now my boss. We arranged a deal where I'd get my hands on the killer if I did jobs for him. I killed Chris Overton. That's a lie. I didn't. Someone else did it. <laughs> I heard Xavier Lombard to send him a message. I tried to get my sister's money back after her husband conned her. I wanted to save him, but failed miserably. I'm glad I failed. He was a dick. Anyway, he died. I did some more jobs. I saved my sister from an act of warfare. And now we're back in the present. Hurrah. Let's get to work and start the show. January 26th. Um, four weeks after my 18th birthday. It rains. There's darkness everywhere. Until a car comes racing across the street in a hurry. Ooh, this is exhilarating. You sad clowns might as well call me Bond. Chad Bond. I didn't say James, so you can't sue me. <laughs> uh, what was I talking about? Oh, right. I'm lucky to be alive, man. On second thoughts, I might crash and die. Better put on my seatbelt. Well, safety first, folks. Aren't you happy to have me back? Guess who's driving with one hand and another in a sling? This bad boy. I'm in the Nan River in Thailand. Near a jungle. Is it Nan? Nan. No, it's the Nan. I shoot my gun as my car races to get away. My enemies are chasing me, but who started the pistol on this act of evil? Well, you know soon enough. Hang in there. This will be rewarding, I promise. Haven't I always kept my promise to you? Thank you for acknowledging that. There's a hint of murder in the air, and I guess who's the one too likely to be murdered? Them, 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 them. That's a good guess. Well done. Yep, you guessed it. It's me. Oh, you didn't think that, did you? Well, tough luck, fuckers. <laughs> Look, I took laughing classes and it didn't change anything. Not my fault. Blame the terrible teacher. Can we focus on my forthcoming death? It's coming. Will you kill me, Hannah? <laughs> My car shushes away, but it's hit the side of a parked car. Ooh, it's an expensive looking car. Oh, here's hoping the owner has insurance. Actually, let's hope he doesn't. Just for the fun of it. <laughs> I'm getting all tingly today. How did I succumb to this fate, I hear you ask? Well, two nights ago, I went to war. A war that had to be started. My wife... What, are you surprised? Yes, I have one. She went missing! At 2 a.m., this gentleman got a call. I flew out and found the murderous bastard who took her, only she wasn't missing. Xavier Lombard had set the whole thing. Yeah, that fool of a clown is back. Should I be worried? <laughs> I was a little until I contacted my wife. Xavier Lombard has been looking for opportunities to avenge my brutal act of... Uh, ruining his face. Oh, please, listen to episode four before you listen to this episode. It's rather good if I say so myself. Ah, I know you believe me. 
How can you not when I have such a soothing voice? Why do people not praise me enough for that? Xavier, our not-so-lovely person paid Chris Overton to attack me and then tried to hire a man to kill my sisters. Ah, but the fool who wanted to arrange our murders uh, met a swift end. This information is what I've been fed. Do I believe it? Ah, not in the slightest. There's more to this misadventure than meets the eye. I'm confident of it. Oh, but uh, oops about the guy who tried to kill my family. Know who you're messing with, people. I take pleasure in my punishments. I'm rather good that way, if I say so myself. Xavier wants me dead. I need to bring him down. If I don't, he'll keep coming after me, and uh, then my sister and I will die. Are those stakes high enough for you? I thought they would be. <laughs> the road up ahead is blocked. I try in reverse, but gunfire follows. There's only one option. Escape on foot and hide. Wait a minute! I'm not the hiding kind! I need to finish this! So I make my escape through the back door of my sedan. I hide behind a car. It's eerily quiet. There's a game afoot here. I need to position myself. I have a clock with two rounds of ammunition in my back pocket. There were three men in the car that was following me. Yes, I'm a mathematician. Are you jealous? Oh, you are? I thought so. <laughs> I don't take pleasure in saying this, folks, but there will be blood. I like being a bad boy. It's very gratifying. I can tell by the expression of the men searching for me they don't know where I am. Then finally, one of the men fires wildly. Oh, what a jerk. Another is smarter. His eyes search, but he, uh, he makes sure he's protecting himself behind the trees. One of the men spots me and fires. He misses. I turn from behind my tree and fire on the other side. And BAM! That fucker is down! Poor bastard. I think he'll enjoy hell. <laughs> I have two more to bring down. It's time to work faster. Let's do it. Two separate gunshots fired my way. Duck, run for my life. I'm behind another tree, but this time, I kneel to the floor. Again, I'm looking for feet. One shot there, and one of these fuckers can't come after me. One of the men walks over. I fire, I miss. The men try and hide. They know my game. I rise and fire at the man. I shoot one of the men. He's gone. What a wasted life. See you later, fucker! <laughs> One last soul to murder. Three quick fire shots. Ooh, this is a thrill ride. Welcome to the Love Podcast level of entertainment, folks. We're the best in the business. So subscribe, would you please? <laughs> oh, we've missed you too. Three more shots he has to reload his ammunition. It gives me a chance to run. Bye-bye, fucker. I run and nearly fall. Whoa, steady, girl. I nearly fall off the edge. More shots fired. Fuck, he's reloaded. Do I jump? I can't turn back. Is he behind me? Do I jump? I'm asking you, the audience. Come on, I'm asking you a question. Fuck, no. I'm not... Going to jump, I'm going to kill this fucker. I pull up my pistol. I wait three seconds and bang! There's a shot fired. But. By who? My eyes are closed. Am I dead? Or alive? Oh, have a guess, fuckers! I'm alive! Oh, thank Christ! This series would have been short if I died, wouldn't you agree? The fool got shot in the neck and he's dead. I walk close to the man and search for his phone. He has his phone on him. Three text messages from his commander-in-chief asking him if I'm dead yet. Oh, what a lovely man. Do you folks want me to break it to him? I use the man's finger and unlock the phone. I search through the man's phone number. 
There's a familiar number on it. The person who arranged this mission was... Huh. Not Xavier like I thought, but actually... Drum roll, if you please. Brrrr. My sister Hannah. <laughs> Why do you want to be dead, little sister? Are you working for Hencho? Are you acting alone in your murderous assault? Are you in cahoots with Emojin? Does she want revenge on me? I will find out the truth. Sis, I'm coming for you, and whether you like it or not, your death awaits you. I rise, duck, rise, duck, but I always rise again. <laughs> Are you delighted to have us back in your ears? Well, you should be. We're pretty good at this podcasting lark. <laughs> I'm not even sure why I laughed there. Recap time. Last time out, I was in Asia. I was trying to figure out who kidnapped my wife. Yep, I have one. It turned out she wasn't lost after all. It was a setup to kill me. I had to destroy three lost souls in a bid to uh, save myself. I did it only to discover that Hannah was behind my murder plot. She needs dealing with, and now that I'm back home, she'll be on the first train back to hell. Ugh, I'm not even gonna bother to laugh, but uh, you want to hear it. <laughs> Ooh, that laugh growing on me. Ah, I'm fucking with you. I have my mission in mind to murder my sister Hannah. And then what, Chad Wigger? Then I get back to my job of getting my hands on my mother's killer. Fuck, morally, the shit isn't right, is it? Ah, I'll get over it. I'm about to get into an Uber to take me into the city when a car pulls up. And a familiar face whistles to get my attention. What does he want? I'm driven. My boss sits beside me. He's eating an apple. He looks menacing, but no more than me. No one is more ominous than me. <laughs> we had a deal, son. You do the jobs you're required to do, and I give you your revenge. Why did you get off schedule? I had matters needing my full attention. Do I look like I care? We're on a tight deadline. You get jobs, you do them, or I kill you. Is that comprehended? Yes, anything else? Xavier Lombard is no longer a person of interest. Please focus on other targets. Why? He tried to murder me. You don't ask questions. You do what I tell you. And anyway, he's been dealt with. Move on, that's in order. This isn't what I was expecting, but it looks like I'm going to have to live with it. For now. But I'll find out what happens to Xavier, even if it kills me. Is Xavier alive? I said, move on. My boss pulls out a file. The file has pictures attached to them. Three rough-looking men stare into the camera. These three gentlemen have been smuggling drugs into our city. Cannabis and amphetamine. They're low-level idiots, but they're looking to move on to fentanyl and cocaine. They're about to close a deal with a rival of mine, which could take them to the next level. And we can't allow them to do that. You catch on quick. He's fucking with me. I need you to plant drugs in their homes and call a detective called Fergus Walsh. He'll have a squad ready to arrest them. And once they're arrested? They'll go to jail and die. And here's a warning to you. If you ever go off schedule again, you go on the same route as them, capiche? You have three hours to plant. Call it in. 
Oh, we come looking for you. Get out of my sight. The car pulls up on a freeway and I'm thrown out. <laughs> Let's get to work. From what I understand from my Russian spies, the men needing to be dealt with are the three little birds. Oh, that ruins the song for me. Oh, but uh, it's an extra motivation to stop these bastards from using the name again. These murderous scum have killed three minor drug pushers after double-crossing them. They also have a prostitution ring in the city. The women come from Belarus. They get promised cleaning jobs in Europe, and then the women are kidnapped, drugged, and taken to America to work as sex slaves. The three little birds each have ten separate women they're in business with. So, okay, they fuck these women in exchange for laundering money for them. And if I needed more motivation to go after them, they closed down a library for disadvantaged children in the city. Nuns ran this library. These nuns were threatened with violence and other things I won't mention on this podcast. The three little dicks wanted the building so they could use it as an edifice to legitimize their business. Why is this a problem for me? Well, for obvious reasons, and uh, another one close to my heart. My mother started that library, and when she died, my sisters and I were too young to run it. So we let the nuns run it. So this mission is a personal one-time tour. I'm outside the building, watching calmly. The three little birds come out of the building laughing, and a woman with a stroller tries to walk past but gets stopped. One of the men grabs the woman, and the other takes the stroller. The woman screams! One of the men pokes the baby and laughs. He picks it up. The woman screams louder. The baby pukes on the man. He looks furious. He puts down the baby. And the other two men let go of the woman. The woman hurries away with her baby. Don't worry. These men will meet their end soon enough. Oh, that's a promise. <laughs> Once the men are out of sight, a van pulls up and a woman exits with a laundry bag, which I assume have the drugs. Well done, Chad Wicker. The woman puts it down and then heads back into the van, which moves away. Right. Action time. I take the bag and head into the building where the three little birds came out. Can you feel the tension? Oh, it's invigorating. I know you agree. I have that way about me. Uh, it's unsettling when it comes to getting women. <coughs> oh, but I wouldn't know. I I'm married. Would you mind telling me my wife doesn't listen to this podcast? Focus, Chadwick. Uh, right. <coughs> I'm in the stairwell. I have a key that I had to blackmail the landlord to get my hands on. Let's just say he likes dressing like a baby in full nappy wear. And I have degrading pictures to prove it. <laughs> I open the door, but voices lurk down the hallway. You always lose your wallet. I think it's because you don't like to pay for lunch. Back to me, I get pussy all the time. Why would I get married? My man, I can fuck herself. The men reach the door. I'm hiding in the closet. Shush. Could you not give my position away? <laughs> Did you hear something? Oh, you're always twitchy. Grow up here. <laughs> right. The men walk towards the closet. Oh no, it looks like I'll fail my mission. They opened it up and find nothing. I lied before. I wasn't in the closet. I couldn't trust you. You would give away my position. I'm up here, lads. The men look up to find me behind them. In a ventilated mask, I pull out a string of a canister gas, which I throw into the room. The men fall into darkness, <laughs> struggling to breathe. I find my way out and walk, knowing that the drugs are planted in the apartment. Ooh, this motherfuckers is how you handle a situation. <laughs> oh, I'm so cool, I just know it. 
So what happened next, I hear you ask? The men stumbled out of the building, coughing to find themselves arrested for drug possession and a few other illegal stuff I won't mention here. I didn't even plant them. They were already there. Stupid boys. Let's just say they won't make it out of jail alive. Mission completed! Whoa! I love my job! On to the next victim. Hannah, my sister. Little sister, why do you want me dead? I thought you loved me. Was I a bastard to you as a child? <laughs> oh, we'll know soon enough. Where is he? Fuck! Fuck! My eyes search. They search hard. Damn! He's gone. I failed. The man has escaped. It's time to clean this mess up. Did you enjoy that teaser? Next, let's build up to this cat and mouse game. <laughs> oh, hello folks. This is Chad. Or as I call myself, the Chadwicker. I'm your anti-hero. I'm a pretty loathsome fellow. Uh, listen to the first series to get that logic. And, uh, now, would you please subscribe to the podcast? Thank you. <laughs> Let's do this. In this episode, I search for a man who has information for me. Regarding my sister, Hannah. Yes, I'm still coming for you, Hannah. Your end is close. The man who escaped earlier was Davison Rodriguez. He's an Hentro employee. And, well, rumor has it, he's Hannah's assistant in their evil acts. <laughs> Davison is a tool I need to extract information from. And once I'm done, I'll flip a coin and decide if he should stay alive. Well, he will be alive, that's a promise. I'm not that bastardly. <laughs> I've been using an alias name and have requested a meeting with Davison. Davison thinks I have an information on an ex hetero employee of his. He, Davison, has been searching hard for a man who leaked sensitive information about Hentro. This information led to the CEO being arrested and charged for fraud, murder, and... Oh, come on! What murder isn't big enough for you people to gasp out loud? People, you should sniff. Ah, uh, it's because I overuse the word too often on this podcast. Ah, uh, that's it. The CEO was due to appear in court and answer questions, but no, no. He was silenced. You know how to avoid the scandal from getting out of control. The question is, who ordered the CEO's murder? Why do I sense you had a hand in this, Hannah? Have you been a naughty girl? We'll find out one way or another. So as you probably know, Davison is under pressure from his bosses to get to the man who leaked the info, hence him agreeing to meet me. He thinks I could lead him to the leaker, but <laughs> no, no, I won't. I lied! <laughs> uh, oh, you got that already. <clears throat> cool. Uh, oops. Anyway... I'm waiting for Davison. I need to play this well. Any hints of suspicion early on and Davison could shoot me dead or, or worse, escape to Hannah and tell her everything. And then it will be all-out warfare. There won't be any survivors, only dead bodies in a mortuary. Ooh, my kind of entertainment. <laughs> oh, well... I'm a weirdo. I never thought I was before today, but now I 
realize I fucking am. Well, that needs to change quite quickly. I'm in an abandoned warehouse, watching. It's quiet. We hear crickets in the background and rats trying to find food so they don't die. Ooh, this is joyful, would you not agree? I wouldn't chase anything other than this. I love it. As I hide a car pulls, a tall figure comes out of his car. I'm assuming this is Davison. Oh, let's hope so. Davison searches around. I have my sniper gun trained on him. Actually, I've only got it trained on him in case he has friends. We agreed that no other person should join this meetup. If there are, I'll have to be that evil bastard, won't I? Oh, isn't that why you love me? Oh, please don't deny it. We all know it's true. I get a text message from Davison. Mm. It's coded. I put my rifle down and head towards him. Davison watches me closely as I approach. I have my hands in the air to surrender. I won't kill this innocent fool. That's my promise. It's the second time I've promised that. Uh, why am I becoming such a softy? Grow up here, Chadwicker! Concentrate, Chadwicker. I'm face to face with Davison. Hey, what are you doing here, Chad? Fuck, he knows who I am. How? Ah, oh, fuck, he's my sister's assistant. She probably showed him photos of me. I'm here to give you information. What else would I be doing here? Go back to your world, Chad. Nah, I enjoy this one too much. I offer Davison a hug. He eyes me suspiciously. Oh, I won't hurt you, Davison. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Davison glares for a second and then laughs hard. He <laughs> hugs me and I slip something into his pants pocket. Davison turns to walk towards his car. This is my world, Davy. Hannah's trying to murder me. Why? He turns around, looks puzzled and ghost-like. Hmm. Am I missing something here? Oh, right. He's confused because he knows I'm on to them. Okay, back to our scheduled program. Whew! Am I wrong? She is trying to kill me, isn't she? <laughs> Davison pulls out a gun and points it at my head and I laugh <laughs> So it is true, I have the answer at last Oh dear Davison puts a finger to his ear Someone is listening to our chat, someone else is here Shots fired, I hide behind Davison's car Davison isn't lucky, he's shot in the leg Listen men, I'm dead They'll kill me, leave! Who's the real person behind this act? I don't know, but trust me. You don't want to find out either. They're ruthless, they'll eat you alive. More shots fired, they're getting closer. I have one last question to ask and then I run. Is Hannah part of Hencho? Has she taken over my mom's role at the company? Yeah, she's part of it, but Hencho is also playing her. You're both being played against each other. Why? Davison is shot in the shoulder, he screams! <gasps> okay, it's time to hurry away. Bye-bye! I run for my life as shots follow me. I made my escape, but... No! Fuck, he's up! Davison is getting on his feet and running! Davison played me! He faked the seriousness of his injury to prevent me from asking further questions! The gunfire has stopped. Whoever was shooting has moved on. I need to find Davison before someone else does. If I don't, Davison will be silenced and, well, I can't extract information from him if he's dead. Not a medium, but I do talk to the devil in my sleep. Ugh, wow, I'm an idiot sometimes. Why confess something so personal? <laughs> I chase after him. I'm back where we met. I look around. Ah, oh, fuck. Where is he? Fuck. Fuck. My eyes search. They search hard. Damn, he's gone. I failed. The man has escaped. Take out my phone. Remember when I slipped something into Davison's pants pockets? Well, it was a tracker. I know exactly where he is. I'll find him. I follow the tracker. There's a tree ahead of me, and Davison hides behind it. Is he hiding? 
He isn't moving. I pull out my weapon and slowly advance. Ooh, this is dangerous. But is in danger my middle name? That's oh, actually Lucifer. I had to change it legally. Ha! <laughs> Kidding, but boy, you've bought that, didn't you? Oh, you're pretty tragic. I approach and... he He's down. Davison is gone. Someone took care of it. It might still be around, and bang! A shot hits a tree. I run for my life, another hits the ground. It misses, but only just. I'm away. I make it to my car, and I drive away as fast as I can! Okay, it's time to deal with this matter head on. I need to meet Hannah and resolve this little issue. Let's see if she comes out of this situation alive. I wouldn't bet on it if I were you. You would be a fool. <laughs> it's Chadwicker here. Hello, folks. Are you well? There's no time for good manners. Let's get to business. <laughs> My car screeches to a stop. I have to move fast. She's about five minutes behind me. My men have her. Three guns point at a woman. I don't want her dead. If I did, she'd be gone by now. I step out of my car. Gentlemen, no guns, please. The woman looks utterly shocked and well pissed off. My men put down their guns. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Zoe Collins. She's Hannah's girlfriend. And of course, is my sister. Yeah, I know, I'm a dick. Sadly, the words have been tattooed on my forehead since birth. Oh, focus, Chad. Zoe's about six months pregnant, and does that make you hate me for what I'm about to do? <laughs> Silly question. I know. I don't care. I need answers. And I need them quick. Zoe, would you mind getting into my car? What's going on, Chad? We need to chat privately. Well, I don't want to go with you. I get information fed into my ear. She's getting closer. I gesture for my men to handle this. My men grab Zoe and open the car's trunk, put her in and close the trunk door. We get into the car and we race away. Three minutes later, a car screeches to the same spot where we were. Hannah and two men get out. They scan the location, searching. We're not there, fuckers. <laughs> Intel suggests he has her as promised. What does he want with her? Nothing. This is to get to me. Boys, get David to run ALPR on every car that has driven past this location. There's three cameras there and there. We should know everything about the men who took her and the location they're going towards. Get to work. Maybe he knows we're on to him. Get to work. Prologue time. Hello, fuckers. I'm Hannah. In the year of yesteryear. No, fuck him. I'm not narrating this shit like my brother did. My mother worked for Hencho. I was eight when she got killed by their men, so I swore revenge on them and built me up like a machine to be the best. The best in everything. Fighting, driving, intelligence, everything. I did all of that in hope of getting revenge on the scum who killed my mother. Until, until what? It wasn't the Hencho men who killed her. It was someone close to me, someone who I loved and trusted. This person is my heart, my best friend, my fuck. I can't say it. You'll know soon enough who killed my mother. Seven months before the Your Antihero series began, I got approached by a man to do jobs for him in exchange for his silence. This man claimed he knew everything about the person who killed my mother. Lies? I thought so, but it wasn't. He knew the person was my... Fuck. I'm still not saying it. Anyway, for his silence, he tasked me to do jobs for him. Easy jobs to start with. Just enough to keep him happy and satisfied. I did them. And the jobs started getting more aggressive. He started wanting me to hurt people. People I loved. I couldn't do it. I didn't want to do it. Then my brother started working for my boss. My boss asked me to spy on him to ensure he wasn't doing anything that could damage his business interests. I did. Then he asked me to draw up a list of men who needed to be dealt with due to their lack of moral compasses. I had contacts in my local hospital, and a doctor there kept telling me the horror stories of 
the battered women. So I asked him to give me a list of men who needed to be dealt with. Chris Overton came up, and I passed the information to my boss, and he got the Chadwicker. I still maintain that's a stupid name. Anyway, my boss got him to deal with him. Seriously, if my brother thinks he's getting laid, or having people be scared of him because of that name, he's ster seriously mistaken and fucking wrong. What an idiot. What? It's true. Over the next few days, I gathered more names for my boss from various contacts. Finally, we built a list which my boss would then pass on to the chat wicker. I can't even say the name without laughing. <laughs> my brother handled the business front of the operation while I handled conjuring up the names for us. We were a team. Then, well, I messed up. Xavier Lombard. Xavier is the most dangerous man in the city, and Chad pissed him off because of me. My boss was on holiday in Italy, so he didn't know that the name was added onto my list. Thus, me not knowing, Xavier was out of bounds and forbidden fruit, if you please. Xavier Lombard has been going after my brother secretly. I've tried to get my boss to ask Xavier to go easy on him, but he says he has to stay out of it or we're all in danger. It's out of his control. He can't change the situation. It's done. Anyway, I knew about the plot to kill my brother in Asia. However, I couldn't get involved because I was promised that Zoe and I would be killed if I did. My hands were tied. We would have died. So I let it happen. And well, I actually felt guilty. But then Chad survived. However, Xavier still wanted to hurt him, so I had to do something out of my comfort zone. I followed Xavier into a bar, came on to him, and then took him to his apartment where I spiked his drink and did something I won't ever forgive myself for doing. I killed Xavier. I did it out of love. He was diseased and trying to hurt us. I had to save the people I love. I'm not sorry about that. <laughs> Look, I know it's stupid, but I had to protect my brother. After Xavier was finished with my brother, I couldn't risk him come after me too. I did what I had to do out of necessity. It's done and I don't regret it. I didn't calculate that then the chat worker would be on my tail, looking to harm me, looking to get some twisted revenge on me. I love my brother. He's a lost soul, but eventually he'll see it, what I did for him. Only now, stupidly, he's kidnapped the love of my life. He's messing with fire and I'm not a person to be messed with. If I have to kill him to save Zoe, I fucking will. Zoe and our baby matter more to me than anyone on this planet. And like I'll keep saying until I'm blue in the face, I, Hannah, protect what's mine. I save those I love. Deal with it, fuckers. Wow, I'm a bigger dick than Chadwicker when he swears. I will do what it takes to get back my soulmate. Even if it means killing my brother. That's a warning. I hope he knows. I'm in my car being driven to a warehouse where my operation is. It's my office. I make a phone call to my boss. He answers after two rings. Hello? He's taken her. Oh, uh, Lucy. Thanks for getting back to me. Yeah, I'll send over the email now. I'll be back for dinner in two seconds, dear. My boss walks into his office and closes the door. I told you my office hours. Why are you calling me? Chad's taken my wife. I need your help to track him down. This doesn't concern me in the slightest. There's nothing to do with our business interests. You two kids are bigger enough to sort it out your miss. So deal with it on your own. Is that all you have to say? Hannah, sort out this miss or I'll come looking for the both of you to end this drama myself. Do you understand me? Wait, before you hang up, the phone goes dead. Fuck, I'm on my own. Do you think he's harmed her? No, he only wants my attention. Oh, so then he won't- A bullet comes through the window, and my driver is shot in the arm. The car spins and crashes into a parked car. I duck down in the car and pull out my gun. We're being motioned here. This is warfare. The driver is okay. I move around to find out where the gunfire came from. Another one comes through the window. It hits the passenger seat. Someone is high in the building. This is my brother's doing. He's sending me a message. If he wanted me dead, I'd be gone already. I open the back door and walk out of the car, hands raised. A shot hits the vehicle. It wasn't trying to kill me. It was a threat that they could. I wait for Chad to appear. A door to a building opens and Chad walks towards me. Zoe walks behind him with two guns trained on her head. Chad sends me a smile. I approach him calmly. If there are any bruises on Zoe, he's dead. I mean it. I'll strangle Chad with my bare hands. There aren't any bruises, but damn, I was looking forward to it. Uh, well, maybe. I go face to face with Chad and strike him hard in the face. He laughs uncontrollably. <laughs> You'll have to hit me a lot harder than that before I feel something, Hannah. <laughs>
I need my brother in the groin. He goes down like a sack of potatoes. He deserved that. What the fuck, Hannah? Why is he doing this? What sort of business are you two into here? Mafia? Gang? What? What indeed? <laughs> Shut up. Look, Zoe, this has nothing to do with me. I had no part in any of this. Okay. So, who are those two men then? They're friends. Is she that stupid, Hannah? You've done enough already. Don't make me hurt you further. I'm just meant to believe they're friends? Just like that? I mean, what if it... What if this wasn't Chad? What if it was someone else and they wanted to hurt our babies? Babies? It's more than one. Stay out of this, honey. Look. No, I'm done. I need a break from you. I can't trust you. You're a danger to both our children and me. Goodbye. Zoe walks towards the car. Chad motions for one of his men to drive her home. The man does, and the car pulls away. Gentlemen, if you'd excuse us, we'd like to talk business. The men drift away. Two of them get in the car. The one with the injured shoulder gets into a passenger car. It's driven away, probably to a hospital or a doctor. I go face to face with Chad. I kick him and he ducks and rises. I throw a punch and he grabs my hand and twists it. I roll on the floor and twist his. He looks in pain. He elbows me in the ribs and I fall to the ground. I don't want to fight you, Hannah. I only want the truth. I recover and do a kick up. Then I rise up and punch. I catch Chad right on the jaw. You might as well call me Canelo. My brother is floored. He's knocked out unconscious. It's time to end this matter once and for all. Chad, your end is nigh. My secrets will stay buried. In the last episode, I did something unspeakable. I kidnapped the pregnant wife of my sister. We heard Hannah's side of this thrilling story. I fought Hannah, and, well, I'm embarrassed to say I lost the last round of our battle. I lost pretty badly. And now we're alone in a warehouse. I'm out cold, waiting to wake to the fact that my death could be coming to me very soon. <laughs> Let's begin the show, shall we? We're in Hannah's Operation Center. We're alone. It's just us two here. There won't be any witnesses to my murder of Hannah when I awake. I will wake. I will strike. Duck and avenge her. The end is close, and it's time to put on our seatbelts. Hannah's on the phone. I assume she's trying to save her relationship with Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck. It's gone. <laughs> Just let me explain. The phone dies, and out of frustration, Hannah throws it against a wall. Then she picks up a bucket of water and walks over to me. She throws the water at me, and as water meets my face, I awake with a smile. I search around until I see Hannah. I go to stand up, but no, no, I'm tied down to a chair. Damn! Hannah kneels in front of me and starts untying me. When I'm loose, Hannah picks up a chair and positions it in front of me. We both smile. But who blinks first, I wonder? You try any funny business, and I hurt you. Got that? I laugh. <laughs> Hannah's scared of me. That's odd to me, because I'm actually frightened of her. That's why I disguised my fear with laughter. What? Not all anti-heroes are strong. Hello, sweetie. Hello, dear brother. Ooh, you look menacing. Where's this face been? Hiding in the shadows of our mother? I would have liked your shadow growing up. It's always been there. You just didn't see it. <laughs> I turn serious. Why were you trying to kill me? I wasn't. Ooh, she said it with such confidence. Should I believe her? Oh, heck no. Am I a fool? Are you mistaking me for Imogen? Don't insult her, dear sister. She's more intelligent than you think. I'll do what I like. She's not sent me an invitation to a birthday party. I know. Imogen didn't want it to be awkward with you being there. I can't say I blame her. You're a dick. I laugh again. <laughs> I love this game. It's exhilarating. Can't you sense it heating up? We're in the danger zone, folks. There will be deaths. That's a threat. Will it be mine? Well, we'll have to see, won't we? <laughs> Let's get back to the conversation. We're family. It has to be awkward. Well, you had a hand in her husband's murder. I think you owe her a free pass on this one. 
Back to you and me for a second. Why are you trying to murder me? Have you discovered Zoe has secret feelings for me? Because I'll tell you right now. I've had them for her too. Strike! Hannah strikes me across the face. I bleed and then do the following. <laughs> it's starting to become addicting to use that laugh. I must admit. Hannah stares at me for a second. She's thinking. Who's fed you that information? Who's telling you I want you dead? I worked it out. Xavier Lombard hired you to kill me. He works for Hencho and you, my little cherub, work for them too. Xavier is dead. I killed him. I lift an eyebrow. That's a surprise and a half. You did what? Are you a murderer? Wow. I underestimated you. <laughs> I didn't know you had it in you. Well done. Should we hug it out? I feel a little closer to you now. No. I can't trust that you won't do something stupid. And I still can't believe what I hear now. Growing up, you were the girl that took in injured animals and healed them back to life. And now you're a murderer. <laughs> yeah, I like this version of you. I'm sorry, but I do. I did it to protect you. To protect me? Xavier was the only person who wanted you dead. He was trying to kill you, and I protected you by murdering him. Oh, I could have handled him myself. Yeah, I know. But you're a weak fool, Chad. You needed protecting. Oh, so you work for Hencho? No. Who's behind this matter, then? Who's pushing your buttons? Who killed Davison? My boss is behind this misfortune. He killed Davison. He's been trying to bring down Hencho for ten years. And he killed Davison because? He killed Davison because he thought Davison might uncover the real person trying to bring Hencho down. Which, of course, is him. Correct. Your boss panicked at the thought that the information Davison uncovered could lead back to him. So, he acted and had him killed. I say had, he did it himself. Well, then I need the name of your boss. You work for him. I look confused for a second, and then it hits me like a bullet to the throat. It's my boss! He's behind all this! He's been manipulating Hannah to do things for him. What's he told you? Enough to work for him. Oh, and what's that? None of your business. Hannah? Who are you protecting? What's the name of the person you're protecting? I'm leaving. Did our boss tell you that he had someone in his possession? Who murdered our mom? Hannah turns sheepishly white. Ooh, this seems serious. He told you he had the murderer who murdered our mom? Yes, but I sense you already know who that person is. I need to go. Hannah, who's the person that had our mother killed? Tell me now! I can't. Was it you? Did you have her killed? No, I didn't. Why would you think that? I was 12 when she died. I loved her. I do not like this picture, Hannah. Well, I don't care. I need to handle this situation. What does that mean? I need to know who my boss has. Why? Because I just need to know. <laughs> you need to know whether the person our boss has is the real murderous victim who took our mom away. I have to go. Why do you want to protect them, Hannah? Because I'll tell you now. The moment I set eyes on them, that fool will meet a violent death. That is a threat. You won't touch them. You do, and I go after you and your wife. My wife? Oh, you think I don't know about her? I will find out the truth. Mess with me, and she dies. I take a moment to think. But there's a shot fired. Oh, no. I take off with Hannah following me. Three goons follow us on foot. We walk to a door and open it, only to find three cars screeching to a stop in front of us. Five men have guns trained on our heads. They approach slowly. They reach us and wait. We know nothing. You don't know anything. What? Our boss gets out of his car and walks over. Well, well. Oh, I see you haven't killed each other yet. Eh, he's my brother. I love him. So it seems. What's my next mission, boss? Why don't you ask your sister? Hannah closes her eyes 
and my boss laughs. You've been the one giving me my operations? Yes. My boss takes out his pistol. I have one final job for you to do. Both of you. You do this, and Ted, I release the murderer who killed your mum. My boss pulls out his phone and... Why is Emulgen tied to a chair? Why indeed? Would you answer that, Hannah? Did she kill our mother? No. I think you'll find she had a strong hand in her murder. I accept the offer. What's my job? I sense you want to protect your sister from the hands of Chad, right? Yes. So, welcome to the Hunger Games. Whoever gets to your sister first, saves her or kills her. I won't kill her. You say that, but wait till you hear Imogen's story. What's he talking about, Hannah? I don't know. Look, Chad, you can't go after Imogen. She's a victim here. He will go after her because if he doesn't... A boss swipes through his phone and produces an image of Zoe tied to a chair. Two men point guns at her. She dies. <laughs> Are we both ready to do this? I can't do this. You either choose to do this mission or lose your pregnant wife, Hannah, or your sister. You have 24 hours to get to Imogen. You don't try and Zoe dies. Goodbye. Tick tock, the clock is ticking. Have fun. My boss walks to his car. He enters and it's driven away. The other men disappear and it's me and Hannah alone. Don't hurt her. I'll do what I have to do to get the information I need. She didn't kill mom. Hmm. Well, there's doubt in this head. Chad, please. You've already taken too much from her. Don't take her away from her kids too. Please. It's her birthday tomorrow. Don't do this. I walk away into the night. Chad, please don't hurt her. I'm not going to, I'm not a fool. I know there's a game afoot here. My boss is playing us. Emojin wouldn't kill our mother. Hannah might be dumb enough to believe it, but I'm not. I hail a taxi. It takes me to an abandoned house. It's quiet. Is Emojin here? Will she die today? <laughs> no. Three days ago, before I took the course of kidnapping Zoe, I found the man who leaked sensitive information on Hencho. This man is the most dangerous man to my boss, but he's also the leverage I need to save Emojin and Zoe. All I have to do is get him on camera. Then Zoe and Emojin are safe and well. I enter the house and find a body on the floor bleeding. He's dying. Someone's got to him first. I race over and grab a kitchen towel, put it on his shoulder where he bleeds out. The man is barely conscious. He looks at me, begging me to save him. I take out my phone to record the audio of our chat. One confession, and this game is all over. I raise his head. He looks like he's losing the battle. Tell me, who hired you to leak sensitive information about Hensho? The man mumbles. It's barely audible. I try again. Who hired you to leak the information on Hencho? The man stares. He's edging closer to his death. I twist the towel into the man's flesh wound. He screams. Ah. I raise him again. Who hired you? The man looks me in the eyes and smiles. George Henry. Bingo. I have the confession on tape and this game is over and done with. I let go of the man. The infrared lights race around the halls. The scum who got to my informant is still here. I tried to hide, but... There's no escape, Chad. Ooh, that's a familiar voice. Coming down the stairs is Imogen. She shoots my informant dead and points a gun at me. Do you know what today is, dear brother? Ooh, your birthday? No. The day I take your life away. Imogen points a gun and cocks it. A gunshot is heard. Am I dead? Well, you'll have to wait to find out in the final episode of your anti-hero. <laughs>
former right-hand man. A comrade, if you please. A rather lovely chap until he switched sides and kidnapped Zoe. Oh, where did it all go wrong, I wonder? Where's George holding Zoe? I don't know. Daniel, I need your location. He's taking her to some abandoned house near Southwick. Pretty dark here, so I'm not quite sure. What's he planning to do with Zoe? George hasn't told us yet. He's keeping his cards close to his chest. Just know, whatever it is, it isn't good. You think? Is there a way for you to get me your exact location? I can, but I have two kids, and uh, guess what? What? I'd rather not die. Not for this cause, anyway. I won't hurt you, I promise. You've made promises like that before to our dearly departed chums, and what happened, Hannah? You said oops, and they disappeared into dust. It'll be different this time. I promise. Please, I really need to find her. I love Zoe so much. Please. Look, there's no point coming here. George has this place surrounded. You would need an army to get in here. Well, you're a logistic expert. Where might one find one of those men? I'm not helping you, Hannah. How about we play this rather delightful game instead? We can. What's it called? It's called... How would you like to go to the mortuary to see your dead wife and kids? I need a name and address for those men. Daniel thinks for a second. I haven't got the time for you to question my actions. I've killed before, and I'll do it again if I have to. I'm not a person to mess with. Yeah, you really know how to twist someone's balls, don't you? Well, I'm a woman. What experts at that? Start speaking. Aren't you gonna ask how Zoe is? How is she? She's comfortable but quiet. No one's touching. Been bringing her cups of tea. She sits on the comfortable cushion. And believe it or not, our men actually feel guilty about this. Can you promise me no harm will come to her? I'd like to. But I'm not in control of this situation. Can you give her a message for me? George is watching her every step. He has a camera trained on her. I can't. What's your plan, Hannah? I want to help you, but we need a concrete, foolproof plan before I do that. All you need to know is that I'm coming for Zoe. I won't rest until I have Zoe back in my safe arms. Now, would you mind revealing to me the names of those men who can help me? Hannah, he's not messing around. If George knows there's even a hint of you coming after Zoe, George will kill Zoe. So play this smart, or say goodbye to her. Hannah sighs. She knows he's right. Do you have any suggestions on how I can smartly outmaneuver George? Have you ever heard of the gang called Virus Verse? No. Who are they? And that name is more stupid than the one my brother uses. He calls himself the Chadwicker. Okay. Uh, am I meant to find that funny? Just tell me more about the Virus Verse. They're an ex-U.S. Uh, Special Force. They did jobs that got them thrown out of Afghanistan back in the day. They're the most dangerous men in the city. Even George is scared of them. No one crosses them or pisses them off. You do that, and I'll start making funeral arrangements. Lovely. Anything else I should know? You're in danger, Hannah. If you go to them... I hope you know that. This option has to be the last in your arsenal. So, what makes you think I'll convince them to help me? George crossed them and killed one of their men. The virus verse is, uh, has been looking for a name that ordered the killing. They've already hanged the bastard who murdered the man. They just need George's name. I'm sending you a video of George ordering his men to kill the virus verse guy. And once they see this, they'll what? Well, they want to help you. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Okay, send me the video. Daniel sends Hannah the file. It's sent. Along with the address of where you'll find the virus verse gang. Good luck. You'll need it. Thanks. I won't. Listen, before you go, I heard a strange rumor that George might be... The phone dies. Hannah hung up before she could hear the last sentence. Now back to where we left off in the last episode of your anti-hero. Hello, folks. Did you miss me? Oh, I bet you're wondering. Did I die? Did Imogen kill me? Well, here's what actually happened before you get your hopes up. Do you know what today is, dear brother? Um... Uh, your birthday! No, the day I take your life away. Emojin points a gun and cocks it. Oh my god, you think I'm actually being serious? No, I'm not. Can you blame me? You have a gun and I killed your husband. 
Yeah, you did. And I never got to thank you for that. You came after me once. You found out he died. I was in shock, but I got over it. You haven't invited me to your birthday party today. Well, I, I thought you'd be busy with the whole George drama. A bird flies in the room. Fuck, what is that? Emojin shoots her gun at the bird. She misses and the bird disappears. You and your fear of birds. It's a real fear. I'm allergic to them. <laughs> <laughs> More like scared of them. Your fear, diary, soy, nuts if you're allergic to them. Not birds. They can't kill you, Emojin. So the millions of people who died because of shock at seeing birds they've what? Not been killed by them? No, I thought so. Keep it shut. I laugh. I've missed my sister. So what exactly are you waiting for? I have no weapons. You're holding a gun. Why aren't I dead yet? Are you scared of the toe murder could have you on your conscience? I don't want to kill you. I'm not here for that. You're always the one with the heart. Both you and Hannah were, if I remember correctly. What happened to you two? Um, the little act of finding your mother dead on your front door. That's what happened to me. So why did you kill my informant, Emojin? He was trying to bring down someone I care about. Oh. And who is that, dear sister? Our father. Yeah, George Henry is our father, Chad. I'll let that sink in until you put your tongue back in your mouth. I stare at her for a second. I'm confused. What's the game here? There's no logical reason why Emojin would say that unless it were true. Maybe George is lying to her to get to kill me. Let's dig a little deeper and find the absolute truth. That scum isn't my father. He has nothing to do with me. You have his eyes. He's not my father, Emojin. My dad is David Madison. Yeah, and George used David Madison as his alias when he worked for Henshaw. Do you not remember Mommy Dearest working for them? Guess who her assistant was? Guess who Mommy was fucking in her office every chance she got? George Henry, brother G.H. It's time to face up to this twisted reality. He's been trying to get us to kill you. He has a game for Hannah and me to come after you? That man can't not possibly be our father. He has no heart for that! Yeah, like I believe that. You're only saying that because you're shocked. I'm not, Imogen. Look me in the eye and know that I mean that. He's been playing us all this time. Then he's doing a stellar job of grooming you to become his successor. Look, he's our father. Let's worship him. Don't call him that. George Henry is not our father. Deny it all you like, but I have a copy of a DNA test results that... Mm, beg to differ. Wanna see it, brother? I know you do. Stop this. I won't play your game anymore. He's been training you to take over from him, Chad. Why me? And why now? He's dying. He has a tumor in his lungs, and George wants his legacy to live on through you. Later, Hannah walks into a bar full of men. The men stop speaking to look at her. There are warning signs everywhere she does. Uh, We'll say something wrong here, and Hannah's dead. Hannah starts walking towards the barman. You're in the wrong place, lady. You're looking for a death wish. A man stops in front of Hannah. He has a scar across his face and three cigarette burns on his neck. Turn around and go back to where you came, or I kill you. Hannah smiles at the man. He tries to grab Hannah's wrist, but Hannah twists and flips the man over. Well, she's feisty, I'll give her that. Gentlemen, I'm looking for your fearless leader. He knows I'm coming. Everyone in the room takes out the pistol, pointing it at Hannah. Hannah smiles again. Gentlemen, I'm unarmed, and I come offering gifts of revenge. The men keep their gun trained on her. A man approaches from the back. This is Gunderson Hendrick. Ex-Special Forces uh, in both Iraq and Afghanistan. A leader of this little social group, if you wish to call them that. You have guts. I'll give you that. Gunnarsson nods to tell his men he can handle Hannah. Gunnarsson's men lower their guns and go back to speaking to their respective comrades. I have something you want to hear. 
Unless it's you or my long lost sister, I doubt it. You have 10 seconds to exit before I kill you myself. I know what happened to Carlos Morgan. The men around the bar stop talking. They each pull out their pistols and aim them at Hannah again. You really do have a death wish, don't you? Gunderson laughs. He gestures for Hannah to follow him to the back. She follows him, and Gunderson's men watch her like a hawk. So, what do you know? It better be good. I have a recording of George Henry ordering the killing of Carlos. Gunderson stops walking to watch her closely. If you're playing me, I'll... I'm not. I have the recording. It's been triple-checked, and it's George. Gunderson opens his office door. Well, then step into my office. We have some business to do. Hannah follows Gunderson into his office. She sits down on a chair. Gunderson watches her. Would you mind? Hannah takes out her phone and plays the recording. He's putting his nose where it doesn't belong. I want him taken care of immediately. That's an order, gentlemen. Sir, with all due respect, Carlos works for the virus first men. You go after Carlos and it's warfare. We're all dead men walking. It's not worth the gunfire. The man is shot dead and his body falls to the ground. Get me someone competent who's capable of taking orders, and have this Carlos Morgan in a morgue before sundown. Hannah stops the recording. What do you want in return for the service? I want you and your men to rescue my wife. George has her. He wants to harm her, and I want her back safely in my arms. We could do that for you, but we need to gather intel on... No. I want her rescued now. That's the deal. Take it or leave it. You're not in a position to negotiate. I hold all the cards. Don't play with fire unless you want to be burnt. Hannah takes out a gun from a back pocket. There's a back door to this building. How about I shoot you in the head and make my escape? Gunderson laughs loudly. <laughs> I like you. What's your name? Hannah Madison. I like the name. It suits you. Do we have a deal? I'll need to prepare my men. But just so we're on the same page, George is mine. I get to pull the trigger that kills him. Is that understood? Yes. Now let's get to work. Gunderson walks off. My car pulls up to Imogen's house. She gets out. I need to kiss them goodnight, and I'll help you find Hannah. Oh, well, I'll be here. Imogen exits. I get to call from Hannah. Oh, I have news. Me too. I'm going after George. That's a death wish, Hannah. I have help. From who? Your men work for George. <laughs> Not from my men. From the virus verse. Virus verse? The city's most dangerous criminal gang? They won't harm us. We have a deal. Yeah, well, so did the hundred so men who were killed by them, Hannah. It's different. I know it. Where are you, Hannah? Why? Are you alone? Yes, I'm in a car preparing to go after George. Have you given the men the location to where to find George? Not yet. Why? Start your car and race off, Hannah. I need a reason why I'd do that, Chad. Correct. The VV men don't like to leave witnesses behind. They have no moral code by which they play. If Virus Verse is willing to tell you they're going to help you bring down George, then they could just as quickly double-cross you and stab you in the back. You just put yourself and the love of your life in imminent danger. This won't end pretty, Hannah. So what should I do? Gunderson knocks on the window. He wants Hannah to open the door. He acts like it's freezing. Look, Chad, I know what I'm doing. And if I don't, here's the location where I'm going with Gunderson. Hannah sends me an address and then opens the passenger door for Gunderson. My men are ready for this. Are you? Mm, yes. Great. Lead the way. And, uh, huh. your safety is paramount to us, so don't worry. We'll make sure you have one of our guys next to you throughout this ordeal. Oh, that's really not necessary. Gunderson pulls out his gun and cocks it. Oh, I think it is. Drive. Later. I stop my engine. I get out of my car and approach the building. It's night! There's danger in the air. As 
well as death. Look, I'm not seeking to kill my father. I'm simply here to save him, and then later I will question him and find out who killed my mother. He has the answers I want. The question is, did he pull the trigger and just order the killing? What, you think I forgot about my purpose here? Did you think we forgot what this podcast series was about? No. From minute one, I told you I'd find the scum who killed my mother. George, father dearest, well, he was fucking her. As I just found out, he has been involved in her murder. Now, it's time for answers. Now it's time for me to become... Dum bum 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 Your anti-hero! I put on my mask as I sucker punch a security guard at the door. Walk away, dude. You don't know who you're messing with. I shoot the man's leg. He falls to the ground. He'll live. I enter the building. I walk down the hall. Gunfire from outside. I run. Stop. Walk into the nearest bathroom and close the door. I stay quiet. We're setting up this little play as promised we're in the danger zone. Owen Keane is George Henry's right-hand man. He walks past the bathroom door. He sees the man I shot bleeding on the floor. Ooh, that rhymed. What happened? There's someone here. He's going after the boss. Owen shoots the door. Attendant dead. He takes out his phone. Boss, we have a code red. I repeat, code red. Who? We don't know. You have three minutes to take him down. Yes, boss. You too. I want this place in lockdown. No one enters or leaves. Three men approach Owen. You, get rid of the body. You two, search this place from top to bottom. You find anyone who doesn't belong, you silence them. Get to work. The men scatter in various directions. Owen walks past the bathroom. He takes a step and then stops. He walks back towards the bathroom. He opens the door and finds... No one there. He shuts the door and is shot in the leg by me. (laughs) He screams and then I whack him on the head. He's unconscious. I take off Owen's uniform and I put it on. I have his earphone on. There's no one here so far, boss. Uh, He's gone to the back door. Look there. Two men run past me. I hide my face under Owen's hat. I walk up the stairs, searching not for George, but Zoe. I cause this trouble and I'll rectify it, even if I die because of it. Oh, we're just warming up, people. Will I kill? Well, that's a silly question. The less stupid question is, who will die? (laughs) Not me, not Hannah, not Zoe. Hey, there's no one here, boss. Are you sure he went here? Ah, yes. Keep searching. Who's that? That's not Owen. Fuck. George knows it's me. I need to think. No, I haven't got the time to think. I need to act and act quickly. Chad, is that you? Are you here to kill your father? I switch off the radio. I search the upstairs room in quick bursts. The first three are empty until I get to the last one. I pop my head in and a woman is chained to a radiator. Oh, it's Zoe. She has her mouth taped shut. She has no visible bruises on her face. One... Plus, sure, but there isn't a second. She has Halloween movie victim written on her face. Zoe, it's me. I'm here to rescue you. You're safe. Do you know where the keys are for the handcuffs? She points her head to the side. I look to the side, and a gun is cocked. Come any closer, and she dies. Father, you look well for a dead man walking. So, Imogen told you my news. She's clever, that one. Yeah, she is. Why did you kidnap her and then release her? (laughs) Because Daddy loves his little girl. And, as I'm sure you're aware, I'm dying. I want to spend the time with my firstborn. And kidnapping her was the right move? Well, she refused to see me, so I did what I did, as the kids today say now. We've talked, and we're cool. Why did you lie about having a Mojin? Have a hand in killing my mother, George. <laughs> Gunderson Hendrix. That name ring any bells? No. Well, it will sooner than you think. Gunderson has a connection with the Mojin, a severe link that goes back to when she was married. If you want to search for the person who murdered your mom... 
I will start with Gunderson. George groans in pain. He clutches his stomach. You had no hand in her murder? I loved her. We were a month away from quitting Henshaw and moving to Florida. We... George sobs. I loved her. Please believe me. Uh, yeah, I do. But why the Hunger Games? Because I knew you were getting closer to finding out the truth about who I was to you. And I need time to sort out my affairs before you undoubtedly dealt with me. I'd say this moment you were having is uh, worth the trouble we went through. Wouldn't you agree? George groans in pain again. Doctors gave me two days. <laughs> I don't think I'll make it past tomorrow. Oh, well. How would you like to see your grandchildren? Thank you, but I'm not a good man. Well, neither am I. And I take them to soccer practice for the love of Christ. <laughs> I'm proud of you, son. Ah, oh, nice to hear that. But would you mind handing me the keys to the handcuffs? George takes out his key and throws it towards me. I take it and release Zoe. She hugs me. Take care of them. But there's plenty of them! Screams as the radio and the fire opens out. Do you have machine guns? Open that door. I walk towards my closet. Ooh, there's a Summit Tomo M2 heavy machine gun loaded and waiting for me. <sighs> I take it and position closer to the window. George, I assume you have a security room? Yes, I do. It's on this level. Follow me, Zoe. Zoe follows George out of the room. They walk to a closet door and open it. George leads her upstairs to a security room that opens and they enter and close the door. Meanwhile, I uh, crack open a window to ready my Sumitomo. Ooh, another rhyme! On the ground. Gunderson and his men scout the location. All right, let's make this quick and easy. I want George's dead body next to me before we're done here. Get to work. A man approaches Gunderson. Uh, sir, the girl's escaped. She hasn't gone far. And anyway, we have all we need from her. Let's begin this assault. Quick fire. Three of Gunderson's men are gunned down. Fall back. We've been set up. We don't fall back. We advance. We'll be dead before we can reach the door! Don't fall back, that's an order! Gunderson is shot on the shoulder. He groans in pain. Ah! Everyone back in the truck! We'll deal with George later! You heard him. Gunderson's men fall back. They open the gates and get into the truck and make their escape. The car pulls away. Meanwhile, hiding is Hannah. She comes out of the shadows with her hands raised. She looks up and locks her eyes with Chad. Chad pulls the gun out of the window. Wait, why am I talking in the third person? I pull my gun out the window. Oh, jeez. Who am I becoming? Hannah walks into the house and takes the stairs two at a time. She reaches the landing. Zoe, where are you? A door opens, and Zoe and George walk out. Hannah takes out her gun and shoots George dead, just as I walk out of the bedroom. No! What? What have you done, Hannah? I've killed the man who kidnapped my pregnant wife. He had to die, Chad. It's done. You killed the man who fathered you, Hannah. George was our father. As that sinks in, Hannah pukes her guts. <coughs> Time for the epilogue, motherfuckers. I know it's over, but listen to this. Zoe came out of the hospital. There's been no lasting damage on her babies. They're okay. Hannah and Zoe have ended their romantic relationship after the incident between her and George. She's devastated, but she understands Zoe's position. Zoe has, though, allowed Hannah to see their baby's last sonogram. And although they're not on speaking terms, Hannah has promised she'll convince Zoe to take her back. As for what happened to George's body, he's been buried next to her mother. Daniel Harrison, who survived the onslaught by Gunderson's men, has taken over George's operations in conjunction with my wishes. I've been installed boss, leader, chief mischief maker, if you please. I've also taken George's last name. It's no longer Chadwick Madison. It's Chadwick Henry. Hannah has quit all of her evil practices. 
She now focuses on living a quiet life. Oh, so she says. But it's been an hour since she said that to me, and she's already threatened to kill one of the clowns for scaring our nieces too much. People never learn. As for Imogen, I haven't seen her since I raced off to rescue Zoe the other day. That said, uh, according to her last text, she has news to share with me as we wait for her to appear at her birthday party. Hannah fusses over Imogen's kids. The front door opens and Imogen enters. Surprise. Not that you didn't plan the fuck out of this party. Hello, sister. I hear you have a surprise for us. Yes, I have a new man to introduce you to. He's the man of my dreams, and I want you to be nice to him. Got that? He's sensitive and fragile. <laughs> we'll try our best. There's alarm bells. Something doesn't seem quite right here. There's a tall figure looking in the hallway. He looks familiar. I do not like this picture. Who is here? Well, don't keep us hanging. What's his name? The man walks into the living room. He puts on a smile and says, Gunderson Hendricks, nice to meet you. Gunderson smiles. Fuck. Season two of Your Antihero was voiced by me, Emerson Peary, and Kaya Waters. It was written by Joao Nasita. Look out for season three. It's coming. Ha <laughs> ha!